How goes the difference? Got something a little bit different for you here today. As you can see, this is Gravity Bone. No, it's not what you're thinking. <laughs> this is uh, a game. I mean, it is a game, but it's more like you're playing a spy movie. I would call it the best spy movie you've ever played. Um, obviously pretty short, because as you can see from the runtime, 18 and a half minutes. We're actually going to be fitting two separate games into that. This and its sequel. This was uh, created by Blendo Games, and really I would call it more of a, a narrative experience than a, a game per se. Although there certainly is a game aspect to it. But basically it's all about sort of evoking the feeling of like a 70s spy movie. And it's uh, pretty entertaining for, you know, one or two playthroughs. Worth noting, if uh, you are interested, you can pick this up on Steam for $5, which is honestly a little bit steep, but it does go on sale, so hey. It has sort of a charming aesthetic to it. You know, a lot of games are very low fidelity uh, because, you know, there's just no skill involved with the art, but in this one, I think the aesthetic actually works. Anyways, as you can see, fairly simple. All right. The Manitoba Beast Bug placed into the line grass was successfully delivered to the target individual. With the system sense and immunity, we can detect the Manitoba Beast Bug's fumy gases and track the target individual across the galaxy. There's a an interesting element of humor in this. Which is kind of funny. And yet we get these loading screens. Alright. So despite being relatively simple and uh, not all that complicated, which is basically saying the same thing twice there, there are a couple twists that may surprise you in this. What are we reading here? Interesting. So you can actually die, like say for instance you get crushed under those. And I do like the way that the tutorials are put on the wall. Not that that's a particularly unique thing, but it would be really annoying if we had dialog boxes popping up. It's funny too how we're we're given like very limited information on why we're doing this stuff. It very much reminds me of like a almost like an episodic spy show from back in the day. Not exactly the same, but think of like Get Smart or something, not the movie the show. And for whatever reason, you know, the aesthetic of this game is rather pleasing to the eye, I would say. Just goes to show you, you can have a very simple sort of aesthetic, but it can still be pretty nice if it has, you know, some sort of originality to it. it always looks like you're going to miss that jump, doesn't it? Oof. So by this point you're probably wondering, well, what's really the point of this game? It looks pretty basic and not that entertaining. Just wait, it gets better. In fact, we're almost done with Gravity Bone, funnily enough. Okay, that should be a wrap. Ah, 
Didn't see that coming, did you? Okay, I'm gonna need that back though. <laughs> the animation's so funny. Pay attention though, as this goes on, the way that the game is scripted timing wise really makes this feel like a movie. Like the way you have to duck in there to avoid the train. And it's all timed so that as you're running through, you know, it'll everything will hit with the correct timing. That's kinda kinda fun. Or <laughs> like this part. Anyways, we're just about done, so I hope you enjoyed Gravity Bone. We'll be moving on to the sequel in a moment. There's really not much to say here, I just really love this part. <laughs> you can just really imagine the entire rest of the story just from that little section. So that was Gravity Bone, and that is sort of what you're going to come to expect from uh, the sequel as well. 30 Flights of Lovin', and yes, they both sound like they're some sort of other form of media. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> so we sort of got a uh, period in history established here. Obviously, with uh, Mecha Presidente. Oh, yeah, Prohibition, I mean. Now, what's kind of neat about 30 Flights of Lovin' is that you can actually um, do a developer's commentary version after you complete the game, which is kind of neat. It gives you some other information about like how certain scenes were done and stuff. And in my opinion, it's a pretty effective narrative style. I mean, with just those four little screens, we already have the basic plot established. Also, we all know that Midnight Hobo is by far the best alcohol. <laughs> Doesn't get old. You know that geese would do the same thing to you, right? If they'd give them the chance. So in comparison to Gravity Bone, 30 Flights of Lovin' definitely jumps around a lot more in terms of the plot. Obviously we're here now. So something went wrong. And in a single playthrough, you're not necessarily going to get everything that happened. You might have to go through a couple times, and even then, it's not exactly clear.
I do kind of like the way that it jumps between scenes as well. So instead of having us just walk down one long hallway, it'll jump to different parts of the hallway. And then we get these flashbacks. It's really, it's very spy movie. This is kind of comfy, isn't it? There's kind of a silly uh, joke down here. Stairs are out of order. Right. A lot of cats, what can I say? You see what I mean? There's just something pretty visually appealing about it. Uh, we know you, don't we? Hmm. Now, one thing that's kind of funny is apparently in the developer commentary, um, creator said that what happened next was actually an accident, but it ended up being perfect for the scene. Yeah, all these people floating apparently was accidental, which is amazing because it's, it's perfect. Anyways, it seems as though somebody got double-crossed somewhere in here. That would be my interpretation of it. I like all these advertisements as well. They're pretty entertaining. Like I said, it has a really weird sense of humor sometimes. And honestly, if we didn't have those loading screens in the middle, so much better, but alas. Now, there's not really any actual gameplay right here. It's just sort of cinematic. Think uh, like a scripted modern military shooter, I guess. That's a neat effect. And then you remember, ah, it was her. She set us up. Eyes on the road, eyes on the road, eyes on the road, eyes on the road. And 
that was 30 flights 11. The rest of the game, if you want to call it that, is uh, just this little museum section where you can go through and look at like a few proofs of concept and that kind of thing. So is it a game? Yes. Is it uh, worth five dollars? Uh, that's going to be a tough call. I mean, you've basically seen everything there is to see other than the developer commentary. But, you know, if you want to pick it up on sale, it, it is entertaining as a... I hesitate to call it an art piece because that sounds kind of pretentious, but... I do rather enjoy it. And I played through it a few times. As you can see, it is running on the Quake 2 engine. But uh, it's one of those those games that really just has something kind of charming about it. It is obviously very simple. And then this, I have no idea what it has to do with... Uh, the game itself. I think this is just a proof of concept for the engine. I mean, yes, that's true, but uh, it's still kind of weird that <laughs> that's in this. Well, there you go. We all learned something today. And isn't that the most important thing? Well, everybody, I want to thank you very much for watching this slightly odd uh, playthrough of Gravity Bone and 30 Flights 11. If you did enjoy what you saw, then feel free to check it out on Steam. Alternately, feel free to check out my channel. See you on the next video, everybody.